G'day, Dylan from the Byron Bay Observatory here. On a recent video, I got a comment from John Knight, who rightly agreed with me, but also rightly observed this to uh, get that alignment right. And that's really great for when you're doing planetary work, because it's hard to go to a planet. It is hard to go to planets, I agree. But why? We know where they are, and we can sink fairly close by, but it ought to work, surely. And you know what? He's absolutely right. In theory, our computerized telescopes know the sky map, they know where the planets are at any given time, they should be able to accurately go to and slew to the planets without any intervention. However, in practice, if you've ever done any planetary, you know that the telescope takes you to the ballpark, but not necessarily to the front row seat behind the pitcher's mound. In this video, as I continue my journey with the C14 in the observatory, I make a few adjustments, and the first thing I'm going to be doing is planetary. So I'll explain why it is actually difficult to directly go to a planet, I'll tell you what I do as a method to find the planet, and I'll see if I can improve on this method a little bit. That way we can get the planet right in the eyepiece. <coughs> or camera. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, you're watching Star Stuff. <laughs> Comet should be over there somewhere. I've got the move shoot move rotator. So we can do track stuff hopefully. I guarantee I'll be the one to see it first. You reckon? With your good eyes? Yeah. <laughs> okay, don't get murdered. Don't touch my tripod. <laughs> Well, it's been a good day in the OBS. I went to uh, get another counterweight. Now, if I bought this online, it would have been like $250, $300 with shipping. But all I needed was the hole bigger. So I took this to a metalworks place and they just drilled out a bigger hole for me. Of course, if I went to uh, Kmart, 10 kilos as a dumbbell is like 30 bucks. But this is the astrophotography tax. Now, something I've discovered is that this whole thing is like a Faraday cage. As soon as I walk in here, my mobile Wi-Fi signal drops to zero, which has really been annoying me, especially when I'm doing planetary. So normally I would use my phone with VNC or remote desktop or something like that to control this computer in here. And then when I want to see the planet as a live view inside here, my signal drops out. And I've confirmed this with other Next Dome users as well. Please let me know if your Wi-Fi sucks as soon as you get inside the dome. I just brought an old monitor in here because normally my eyeballs would be up there in the finder scope. I'm gonna try adding this Skywatcher Evo Guide 50ED little guide scope. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll add a high resolution color camera here and try and use this as a digital finder. So in theory, I should be able to sit inside align the planet in the middle of the crosshairs on screen inside and like with the manual finder scope this digital one should let me stay inside and center the planet on the main image train at least that's the theory The size of this telescope actually still scares me. And maybe it's because I know now 30 kilograms there, 20 odd, 30 there. I mean, this thing can really do some damage, not just to itself, but to me. It's kind of nice having the monitor down there because um, I normally don't have any kind of nice light in here, but that's a quite a nice soft light. Uh, but anyway, uh, first thing I'm going to do is open the observatory, open Nina, open Fire Capture so that I can see the live stream from the camera on the monitor. Hop over to Nina and I'll go into Imaging and go to Solar System Body, Saturn, Load. I'm going to hit the Frame button which will open up the Framing Wizard and it loads in a one degree patch of the sky. Now these camera parameters are set up for my DSO work, so that is not how much I'm going to see on the planetary camera. The planetary camera is only going to see like a fraction of an arc minute. It's uh, tiny. 
and therein lies the problem. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to go to the slew option, and I forgot to sync the dome, so I'll just tell the dome to sync. I'm going to leave Fire Capture running there, a live loop on the screen. Uh, but normally at this point, what I'd be doing is coming back around here and looking through the finder scope. And you can see in the finder scope there, Saturn is pretty close. Uh, so I'm going to use the hand controller just to shimmy it into the middle. I've pre-aligned this finder scope to match what's on screen. So if I get it into the middle of the crosshairs, that should sync up. There it is. I am focusing with the focus knob like a goddamn caveman. Now if you're going to use that finder scope method, uh, once you've got it centered on the screen, you want to go back to your finder scope and realign it and make sure it's dead center for next time just to make, make it really easy on yourself. What I want to do is get this second one going, so I'm going to give that a go inside. But the real issue with GoTo is that when we are using a planetary camera, it is a tiny, tiny, tiny field of view. Normally when we plate solve in Nina on DSO objects, that plate solve database is configured for the field of view that we're using and it knows exactly how many stars to pull out to be able to match patterns and figure out where it is in the sky. When we're talking about planetary, the fields of view are so small that even if you bumped up the exposure, you might only get one or two stars. And one or two stars does not make a pattern. It makes a line. And it's very hard to figure out where you are in the sky with a line. Now it is possible. I mean, in theory, if you did a minute long exposure and you were perfectly in focus and you had a massive database on your computer, then yes, you probably could go to a planet uh, eventually. But I think the better way is to use the finder scope method either visually or digitally, which is what I would prefer to do. Now there is also spiral search on EQMod. Um, spiral search I've found is really good at moderate focal lengths, but now that I'm on these really long focal lengths, uh, it gets very, very unusable. You can use the spiral search and it will slow around in a spiral pattern. And sometimes you see the planet flash up on the screen, but it goes by so quickly, it's hard to find it again. There has to be a software way to do this properly though. I think if you boosted the exposure and let the computer just find the planet in a patch of sky, I reckon software could do that. Someone smart can figure that out. Not looking good at all. So yeah, you can see the scene was terrible. So Okay, now I have the wide field digital finder scope finally configured as well. So Saturn's in the middle there of the screen. And I just used the three ring screws there and there to get that nicely aligned in the center. So now in theory I can go to a planet by going to the rough area inside then pulling up fire capture or sharp cap and looking through this guy getting the bright point in the middle without having to come out and look through the finder scope. Now the view of Saturn was pretty abominable. The seeing was just terrible as you can see. I don't have electronic focusing sorted out. I'm using the QHY715 color camera, which is not something I'd normally do. Normally I would use R, G, N, B and a mono camera, uh, but that's all right. It was a good test of the finder scope setup. After that, I went to look at the digital finder scope and just train on the moon, see if I could find the moon. And uh, it worked beautifully. I could see when the edge of the moon was in the center, the edge of the moon was on the screen. Uh, in the main image train window as well. And it has this cool effect where if I slew around uh, in any direction, I've kind of got these two camera views that slew around at the same time. So that was pretty nice. The camera that I'm using on the finder scope is the QHY 462C, another color camera. So that was fun to play around with that. Just for shits and giggles, I took a quick video and stacked the moon and yeah, not bad for a tidy little scope, but it's really the C14 I want to get humming and that's going to mean better seeing and a whole lot more stuff. Thanks for joining me on this journey as I configure the observatory and I hope your astrophotography journey is going well. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you've been watching Star Stuff and remember everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.